Okay. So uh, the first Hegel move is isotopy, right? So you can, uh, yeah, you can sort of wiggle around your curves. Uh, so. Uh, so we're going to be interested in isotopy uh, through disjoint simple closed curves. Um, and then we also want to make sure that we miss the base point. So for example, right, suppose Suppose this was uh, your set of attaching circles. Well, oh, and I should have a base point somewhere. Well, you're allowed to um, sort of wiggle them around. And so if you notice, well, if these curves bound, bounded disks on a handle body, well, these ones will also still bound disks. Uh, the second move is a handle slide. Great. So this is probably easiest to describe via a picture. So let's say uh, these were my uh, um, attaching circles. So let's say we had gamma 1, gamma 2, and gamma 3. <coughs> well, I'm going to replace these with um, a new set of attaching circles. I guess I'll go over here. Great. So what? Oh, there's a base point somewhere. Great. And so, what do I want to replace them by? Okay. So let's let's say that we're going to slide alpha one over alpha uh, gamma one over gamma two. So what should you do? So you can think of this as well. Choose an arc from gamma one to gamma two that misses your base point. So say here's an arc. Great. OK, so throughout this, gamma 3 is just going to stay over here. And gamma 2 is also just going to stay like this. And we're going to replace gamma 1 with a new curve, gamma 1 prime. And what are we going to do? OK, so here's. Um, Great. OK, so first, I like to think of this as first we sort of isotope gamma 1 along this arc. So it gets really close to gamma 2. And then once you get really close to gamma 2, well, um, take the connect sum with gamma 1 and a parallel copy of gamma 2. So now this is gamma 1 prime. Great. So this is a handle slide that. Uh, we started with gamma 1 through gamma g, and then we ended up with gamma 1 prime, gamma 2, gamma g. Great. And maybe you can convince yourself that, well, if these are a set of attaching circles to the handle body, well, these are also a set of attaching circles. So I guess the work is to convince yourself that gamma 1 prime uh, is going to bound a disk. Oh, right. So, right. So, we're starting with a set of attaching circles for some handle body. So it's saying that you have the handle body. 
So it's saying that this surface here bounds some handle body, and these three curves bound disks in, those handle, in that handle body. And then the claim that I'm making is that, well, if these three curves bounded a disk in that handle body, well, these three curves also do. Uh, oh, so, um, right, so sort of th this handle body is sort of hard for you to see, but so this, this surface here is the boundary of some, of some handle body, and then in that handle body, this curve bounds a disk. Other questions? I'll say that again. Oh, the, yeah. The, the the orientation of the curves doesn't 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 matter, right? Nothing we've done sort of depends on the orientation of the curves. We're just using the curves to sort of, um, yeah, attach disks along them. That's right. Great. Okay. Okay. So we have these two moves: uh, isotopy and handle slide. OK, and then the, the third move um, is called stabilization. Uh, so let's let uh, sigma alpha beta be a Hagar diagram. Great, so uh, stabilization. Well, we're just going to take the connected sum uh, with um, uh, something that is homeomorphic with something that's homeomorphic to this picture. So here is a torus, and then here is a beta, and here is an alpha. Um, so so an example. Uh, so maybe this is our this is so maybe this is the Hagar diagram that we're starting with. Well then if we stabilize it, we'll just take the connect sum with that picture over there, and we end up with uh, this picture. So this is maybe beta one. This is beta 2. Here's alpha 1 and alpha 2. Great. And then there's also the um, opposite of stabilization, uh, destabilization. And that's just the reverse. So going this way is stabilization, and going this way is destabilization. Ah, yes, yeah, and so, <coughs> wait, so this is just, right, this is S3, and if you take the connected sum of two Hagar diagrams, well, uh, you can convince yourself that gives the connected sum of the two three-manifolds, so it connects something with S3, so we're not really changing our three-manifold. <coughs> and that's good because of uh, the next theorem that I want to state for you. Um, so I'll attribute this theorem to uh, Reitermeister and Singer, um, even though maybe the way that I'm stating it is not the way they originally stated. The way that I'm stating it is, I guess, due to Oshroth and Szabo. Great. So uh, suppose I have two Hagar diagrams for the same three manifold. So I have H and H prime. So let these be uh, two Hagar diagrams for the same three manifold. Well, then the statement is uh, that they're related by a sequence of these three Hagar moves. Uh, so isotopy, handle slides, and stabilizations and destabilizations. So then H 
and H prime are related by a sequence of isotopies, handle slides, and uh, stabilizations, destabilizations. Right, so you should think of this as analogous to Weidemeister moves, right? If you have two projections of the same knot, then there's this is a sequence of Weidemeister moves taking you from one projection to the other. And this, well, if you have two Hegel diagrams representing the same three manifold, well, then there's a sequence of Hegel moves taking you from one diagram to the one diagram to the other, that's not quite true. You might have to stabilize both of them, but there's a sequence of moves taking you from one Hager diagram to the other. Right? And so in, in knot theory, why are Weidemeister moves great? Well, they're great because if you can define, you know, maybe define a knot invariant in terms of a projection, and you want to prove that it didn't depend on your choice of projection, well, you just show that your invariant is unchanged under Weidemeister moves. <coughs> so in the same way, well, we can define a three-manifold invariant in terms of a Hager diagram, and if we show that our invariant is unchanged under Hager moves, then we know that it's actually an invariant of the three-manifold and doesn't depend on our choice of Hager diagram. Good. Questions? Yes. Yes, that is true. If you isotopy uh, I guess I'm confused by what you mean by saying alpha goes to. Um, oh, it's not determined the isotopy class of. Um, yeah, I guess I'm not sure. Uh, it, may, it probably does. So you don't want to take the alpha curves to the beta curves because right, the alpha curves bound disks on one side and the beta curves bound disks on the other side. So take the alpha curves to the beta curves. Um, I think you're just going to always get a connect sum of S1 cross S2s. Um, uh, yeah, but maybe we can talk about this later. Um, good. OK. Good. So we've talked about Hager diagrams for three manifolds. Um, we also want to be able to define a knot invariant. And we want a knot invariant to sort of be similar to the three manifold invariant. So maybe we want to describe it via some sort of souped up Hager diagram. So we want a way to be able to describe a knot in a three manifold. And for simplicity, um, we're going to stick with knots in S3, even though the setup works more generally. So I want to talk about. Uh, doubly pointed Hager diagrams. Okay, so we're going to have uh, let K be a knot in S3. And now I'm going to defi define for you a doubly pointed Hager diagram for K. So a doubly pointed Hager diagram for K is uh, great. So it is a five tuple. We have a surface sigma, uh, alpha curves, beta curves, and now two base points, which we'll call W and Z. Great. OK. So what are we going to require on this five tuple? Well, uh, Sigma alpha beta is going to be a Hager diagram for S3.
And now somehow, these base points are going to be encoding or not. So k is uh, the union of arcs uh, A and B, where let me tell you what uh, A and B are. So A is an arc in sigma minus alpha uh, connecting W to Z. Right, so right now, this is an arc in the surface. Um, and now, uh, let's push this slightly into the handle body H1. Right, remember, the alphas are a set of attaching circles for H1. And now, similarly, uh, beta is going to be an arc in sigma minus the beta curves uh, connecting Z to W, and then we're going to push it slightly into H2. So B is an arc in sigma minus beta. Uh, connecting Z to W, pushed slightly into H2. Remember, the betas are a set of attaching circles for H2. Great. So let me draw an example. So I'm going to draw for you a Hager diagram for S3. Great, so this is, this is S3, right? There's just an isotopy taking us back to that standard genus 1 Hager diagram for S3. And now I'll put a base point W right here and a base point Z right here. And I'm claiming this is specifying a knot in S3. So, well, we can get the knot by following this recipe. So maybe let's start here. So let's take an arc in sigma minus the beta circle connecting uh, W to Z. Great, so if I want to, maybe I'll go around here. Great. So it looks something like this. And now I want to push it a little bit into H2, so maybe I'll push it a little bit sort of uh, up off of the surface. And now I want to connect W to Z, uh, missing alpha. And then I want to push that slightly sort of inside. Um, great, so this is, I'm going to push this slightly inside, so sort of this is going to go through here and like this. Great, so this is a knot in S3, right? I guess um, since I've pushed, these, since I've pushed uh, the arc A slightly into H1 and the arc B slightly into H2, well, this, this circle that I got, it intersects our Hager surface in exactly two points, Z and W. Um, and it, you can check, right, this, um, if you sort of forget the Hager diagram and just look at this orange knot, uh, this should be the left-handed trefoil. So the point is that just by adding this extra base point Z, well, now, now this diagram actually describes a knot in our three manifold, the knot you obtain exactly by this recipe on these two boards. Great. OK, and just like any two Hager diagrams for the same three manifold were related by a sequence of Hager moves, well, any two doubly pointed Hager diagrams for the same knot are also related by a sequence of Hager moves um, where now, now we have two base points, so our isotopies have to miss both base points, um, and the handle slides also have to be away from both base points. But so that's the, those are the extra additional restrictions, and then uh, any two doubly pointed Hager diagrams for the same 
uh, not are related by a sequence of these doubly pointed Haggard moves. Um, great. <coughs> so one thing you might be wondering, you might be wondering, well, um, does every knot in S, can every knot in S3 be described by a doubly pointed Hager diagram? Um, and so the answer to that is yes. And so <coughs> um, I'll prove that through, through you by describing a recipe that takes a diagram of a knot and then spits out a doubly pointed Hager diagram um, for that knot in S3. So let's start with um, this knot here. So I'll start with this projection of the trefoil. Great. <coughs> okay, so if you forget the crossings in this diagram, well, then you're going to get a graph. And then you can take a, let's, our surface is going to be a boundary of a tubular neighborhood of that graph. So our surface will look like this, right? So if you um, forget the crossings, well, you get this graph, and then just take the boundary of a tubular neighborhood of this graph. <coughs> and now, where are your alphas and betas going to come from? Well, your betas, um, you have these bounded regions. And so around each of these bounded regions, we'll put a beta circle. So we'll get beta circles here, here, and here. And now, where are, where are uh, our alpha circles going to come from? Well, each time we see a crossing like, say, this, um, we're going to get a picture. We're going to put in an alpha circle that looks like this, sort of locally. Right, so at this crossing, we want um, an alpha circle like this. At this crossing, we want a circle like this. And then at this crossing, we want one like this. Great, and then, um, right, well, we have a, this white surface here, we have a genus four surface. I've described for you three alpha circles. And so now we'll just put a fourth one that's just a meridian. And then we'll put two base points on either side, say coming from the orientation. And then I'll leave it as an exercise for you to check that this is indeed a doubly pointed Hagar diagram for this non S3, right? So maybe I'll sort of describe in words how one might think of it. So on the outside, you have these beta circles that are going to bound disks. And then when we fill in sort of the outside with a, with a three ball, well, we're sort of just left with sort of the inside of this surface, what's inside the surface. And now each crossing, we're sort of gluing in this little, this little Pringle-shaped disk. And now if you, if you try to connect, right, if you try to um, draw the arc A described on that left-hand board, uh, connecting W to Z, missing the alpha circles, well, you find that sort of around each of here, you're sort of forced to wrap around in a way that's exactly compatible with the crossing in the diagram. Um, <coughs> And then uh, I guess you should also check that this is, a Hager, this, this is indeed a Hager diagram uh, for S3. Um, but it is, right? So this gives you a recipe, given a knot diagram, a way to build a doubly pointed uh, Hager diagram uh, compatible with that knot. Um, so I'll stop there. That's right, so uh, the arc B that was in sigma minus beta, right, so I guess I drew them both in the same color, but that's this part. Right, that was the arc B, so that should be pushed slightly into H2, which I sort of think of as like the outside handle body. And then the remainder part, this part winding around here, well that was the arc A, and that should be pushed slightly into the inside handle body H1. Uh, no, uh, so, 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 yeah, so both A and B should be embedded arcs. Yes. What's 
Oh, nothing does. Um, Right, so th this proof I gave you was specific to knots and to like sort of a diagram for nine S three. Um, yeah, so another way to prove that uh, every three ma three manifold has a Hagar splitting is uh, using Morse theory, and then you can use sort of a, a Morse theoretic proof to prove that any knot in a three manifold has a, admits a doubly pointed Hagar diagram. Oh, was, you mean the, you were asking about the point? Yeah, I think you can point Hagar diagram is not. Oh, that's right, yeah. I mean, a single-point Hagar diagram is a, a based three-manifold, um, pointed three-manifold. 